Shalom and all praises to the Most High. I pray that you all are well. Thank you for joining me for Sister Chaya's words of the day. Today I'm going to be reading from the Colburn Bible. That's right, the Colburn Bible. I want to thank my beautiful brother for sharing these words with me because they definitely blessed my day and I pray that they will also bless yours and that you will be edified by these powerful words of our Messiah. I'm going to be coming from the Book of the Silver Bow in the Colburn Bible. I'm going to read a few things from chapters 3, 4, and 7. Hallelujah. I'm going to start here in 3, and it reads, Go your own ways. Follow your undisturbing beliefs. Had it been in accord with the creating intent, you could all have been born perfect in righteousness. But what would you have been then? That's a question. Mere puppets dangling from the hand above. The divine intent was not to create puppets. What end could they serve? The Supreme Spirit wants men men with free will, capable of decision, free men reaching upwards to divinity, choosing it of their own accord. In 22, it reads, I follow my belief, you follow yours, me to my end, you to yours. You look upon me and say in your hearts, can we believe him? That's a question. Yes, look upon me and see how I live. Do I not live by my own words? That's a question. Now look upon those who declare me to be a false prophet. Who are they? Are they not those who trample others underfoot in a scramble? For power? Do they not thrust the orphan aside and permit the poor to starve in the midst of plenty? Who is the less hypocritical, the man to follow and believe? You demand proof of my prophecy that I am what I declare myself to be. You say, the darkness of the tomb has smitten me with madness and asked me to join you and become cured. May the protecting spirits bear witness that I do not join in ignorance and darkness. The proof of a true prophet is in his way of life. Have I ever lived otherwise than in accordance with my teachings? That's a question. False prophets gain worldly things. True prophets suffer unrewarded without complaint. Even then, what they suffer in the sight of men is only a small part of the whole burden. You mock my teachings, declaring them to be false and foolish. You are suspicious of them. What do you fear? That is a question. Be honest with yourselves. Is it not because they disturb you that inwardly you know their truth? I have not come to bring you consolation. I come to cause you anxiety I do not speak words of comfort, but words of urgency. Change your ways now before it is too late. The road back is long and tiresome. I speak with the voice of the Supreme Spirit. I serve him and to him is my life dedicated. 
were I to demand a sign from him to bolster my own faith, would I not be unworthy of his trust and a failure as a prophet? Did I demand a sign to show you? Would he not think me weak? It does not need a prophet to convert by signs and miracles. Anyone could succeed by these means. The true prophet is needed when it is more difficult, when the opposition is really tough. A true prophet speaks harsh words. He is known by his unpopularity. You may ask me whether it is my desire that you should abandon the worship of your fathers. This is not my desire. Retain all that is good and beneficial, but reject all that serves no purpose. You accuse me of being too solemn. You say I have lost the ability to laugh that I set my face against merriment. In all this, you wrong me, for I never set myself against laughter and happiness. In all things, there must be balance. Laughter and happiness have their place, but are not things of supreme importance. importance. You say, why should we deal with our possessions and our lives as we wish? They are ours. I say, where the wishes and inclinations of a man's heart lead him along the most beneficial road, then follow them. But no man, no man has sufficient wisdom within himself to know where his benefit lies. He must seek guidance if he be truly wise. He must seek guidance if he be truly wise. Which is the wiser to deal with your lives according to the prompting of inclinations and desires or to live them in a way most beneficial to yourselves? That's a question. In 7 and 10, it says, In keeping the laws of the scriptures, good intent is the main consideration. There must be a complete absence of hypocrisy and deviousness. I am a man with many books. Did you hear that, family? I am a man with many books. I will tell you their teachings, but their words are for study by men of insight and learning. I speak in conformity with what is written, for if a prophet sets up a body of laws conflicting with established teachings or laws claiming to replace them entirely, he is a false prophet. In the Colburn Bible, Book of Wisdom, chapter 20, verse 15, it says, Finally, if seeking a religious master, be careful in your choice. In matters of religion, the whole forces of evil are marshaled to deceive and delude. If one whom you would choose as a master seeks popularity or self-advancement, avoid him like the plague, for he is a false prophet. Alleluia. And that is from your Colburn Bible family. And that is the words of the day from Sister Chaya. All praises. Shalom.